This is fun. This is fun. Watch. We have a card picked. In this case, the six of hearts. That card gets placed in the middle of the deck. I'll tell you what. I'll leave it here sticking out to the very last second. So you can see it there all the way before I push it in to the deck. No gimmicks, no gaffs, no breaks. And I'm a liar. It's on top of the deck. It's on top. Whoa. You could take the fool out of Blackpool, but you can't take the Blackpool out of the fool. Unfortunately, I still have the tea drinking habit that I got from my time in the lovely sunny city of Blackpool, England. But today, my friends, that doesn't matter because I'm gonna show you guys a very interesting control. Now, if you notice, the move is just a variation of the classic tilt move by Ed Marlowe, or if you are on Team Die Vernon, it was known as the Depth Illusion. Now, it's a very easy method, and you're gonna see that it's something you could pick up right off the bat, but it does allow you to stick that card in and show them all the way until the very end. Now, personally, I would have loved to see both these men go in a duel to the death until one reigns supreme, but alas, they're both dead, so it doesn't matter anyways. So here is what you need for the move. All you're gonna need to prepare is just a simple pinky break right there above the bottom card of the deck. Now, there are many ways to do this. You saw me do the buckle method, which involves using my forefinger and pressing up on the upper right corner of the card. What this allows you to do, if you notice, is that it creates a bubble right there on the bottom card that allows you to just stick your pinky in there and get a break separating it from the rest of the deck. Another method is known as the pinky pull down, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're just using your pinky to pull down on that card. And now you just get a break by pulling up and just catching that little gap between the fatty portion of your pinky. Now this is done either before or after the card is selected. In this case, you're gonna have any card picked. We're gonna use the eight of hearts. Now you could have this done as the spectators are looking at the card, or you could do it from before, just to make sure that we keep that economy of motion. Let's see how annoying we could get with this card. Pretty annoying if you ask me. So here's the exposed angle of what we're doing. We're just gonna simply place the card somewhere approximately in the middle of the deck and we're gonna have it sticking out in jogged towards us. Now when pushing with my thumb, I'm gonna do a number of things at the same time. I'm gonna push down on the card. Now in pushing down on the card, what's gonna happen is that as I push into the deck, it's gonna create a break between the upper packet and the lower packet. Now notice that I'm also maintaining my break here with my pinky, so that's being held all the while. So now as I push in, look what's gonna happen. I'm gonna push in all the way, and I'm gonna keep pushing past this card. So I'm gonna go approximately half the length of this card. However, their card is now here on top of this lower half of the deck. If I do it with the card face up, it's gonna be a lot easier to follow what's happening. So in pushing forward and down, what's gonna happen is that that break is gonna be created with the upper half and the lower half. And also while maintaining the pinky break, that allows me to pull everything forward and now lift up at this break. So here is the actual situation we find ourselves in. The spectator's card is on the top of the lower packet and the card that we previously had a pinky break above is now in jogged towards us. So at this point, I'm just gonna take this entire pile and place it above the actual upper half, what was the upper half, and now show the participant their card supposedly going in all the way, just like this. But really, their card is already on top and that was the original bottom card that's going into the deck. So the card is gonna go in the middle of the deck very fairly, just like this. We're gonna push down and squirt up all the way in the deck. We're gonna squirt up, we're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna lift up at that small break that we've created with our thumb. We're gonna cut all these cards above the break, just like this, and we're gonna reposition our body to show the participant the card until the very end. We're gonna push it in into the deck. So at speed, the move just looks like this. The card is going in there. I'll tell you what, I'll let you see it until the very last second. You could see me push it in all the way. Some people think I do something sneaky, but no, your card is actually going in there. Notice no breaks, no gimmicks, no gaffes. Ha ha, I lied to you. You're a liar. Now the advantage of using a move like this over something like a tilt is that you could show that card in the actual deck until the very end. You can't do that with a tilt because, well, you're sticking it underneath the top card of the deck. Also with the tilt, the card goes second from the top of the deck. With this, the card goes directly on top of the deck. And I think it provides a nice little fair moment where you push in the card all the way, or you could even have them push the card in supposedly all the way and it's on top all the while. So one more time, just to summarize the entire move here, we have a pinky break right there above the bottom card of the deck. We're gonna pull up with our thumb. We're gonna take this card, which is the card they picked, and insert it into that gap, just like this. We're then gonna pull down with our thumb. In pulling down with our thumb, just like this, we're gonna keep pushing the entire deck forward and lift up at that small gap that we've made. And now in cutting this half above 
the actual original half of the deck, we could then reposition our bodies and show that the card is jutting out in jog towards us and we could push it in all the way, cleanly showing that card is going into the deck. But really, it's on top, baby. So the important part of the control is that you really keep that fluidity going. You don't wanna have a pause or a break in any action when you're pushing a deck all the way in because then that's where they're gonna to gravitate to and it's gonna look fishy there. So you wanna make sure that everything is as seamless and as smooth as possible, which is gonna take some practice. I've noticed when practicing this move that what happens is that you tend to catch the deck when you're pushing it forward and then pull out more cards than just the bottom one. So you wanna make sure that that pinky break is big enough so that doesn't happen, but small enough that it doesn't get detected. Also, it's very important that when you stick the card in the deck, you're gonna to reposition your body so that at the end you're showing them what's happening from this angle which is going to provide them a little insider look if you want and it's going to show them that there's nothing fishy taking place in the back they push in the card or you push in the card and it's already on top of the deck and of course the other advice that i have is to use the cross keys deck which is a uh, um, needed part you need to use them it doesn't work with any other deck and you use code pick to get 10 percent off so what's stopping you but thank you guys for watching the video it really does mean a whole lot make sure to do all the things that people do when it comes to videos they like it they leave comments they share it with their magic buddies leave a comment down below as to what your favorite type of left shoe is i'll be reading those remember this thing all right this thing the pinky with the pinky thing